This is Twit. The threat proposed posed now by the fact that we're all trying to, you know, beat this virus. And so we're looking at location apps uh, and using location information to fight it, which is, of course, a good idea. And yet there's always this risk that when you do that, um, you open a Pandora's box. I mean, let's not forget that it was after 9-11 that the Patriot Act was passed that gave the government unprecedented powers to snoop on us. And uh, is it still in effect? Oh, yeah. Almost 20 years later, it's still in effect. So, the emergency powers that yeah. are still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can find that article by Sam Biddle in The Intercept because it might be in the rundown, but I... I can't see. I, I got the link if um, do you, I can do you, send that's it That's all right. Uh, yeah, the, go ahead. Uh, you can read from it or talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point that I took away from it was this is Mohammed uh, Tejar, or I, you know, however that's pronounced, uh, but he's with the ACLU of Southern California. His point was that it you could have data-driven approaches to uh, tracking the pandemic, but what would be a good idea is to, before you start doing it, have limits built in place yes and then require justifications every step of the way so that all right here are the parameters for how we will use data from facebook we will use data from google and your cell phone and all that stuff but every time you go beyond parameter one to parameter two to parameter three you have to justify it in the same way that you know uh, uh, the police have to go to a court and justify you know increased surveillance and things like that yes lawn dog singing in a chat room never let a good crisis go to waste here's here's our opportunity south korea taiwan and israel they're using smartphone location data to enforce quarantines of individuals moscow police say they've already busted 200 quarantine violators caught via face recognition enabled cameras nsa contractor uh, palantir is helping britain's national health service track infections apps that leverage a smartphone's bounty of built-in highly accurate sensors to enforce social distancing or map the movements of the infected have been deployed in singapore poland kenya uh in mexico uber sent government authorities rider data apparently they had a an infected tourist, uh, and then the person who took the, drove the tourist, they tracked all 240 dry users who had taken a ride with that driver so that the Mexican authorities could notify them all, you may have been exposed, self-quarantine. All of this sounds good, but it does highlight how much location information we're all giving up all the time. And, well, uh, and then the... This week, the stories that were coming out that in the U.S., the municipalities that are using it, th that have started to use it in recent weeks, the reason that they're able to use it is because they're going to the ad companies and the the ad brokers because there's no laws in place for what they in can and cannot and do with them. so much information. And so that data is just sitting there. So you're starting to get municipalities going to them because they're in the business of selling that data anyway. Yeah, and as Bob says in our chat room, I'd opt into tracking for public health in a heartbeat. That's a good, this is a great benefit and maybe could help us end this quarantine faster and do it more effectively, right? And after quarantine, we've got to think about, well, how are, you know, it's, the virus is still going to be out there and potent for at least another year and a half how, until we get a vaccine. How do we track infections and shut them down so that we don't have to all go into quarantine? All of this can be enabled by this kind of location information. Here's and some of the apps, some of the apps that are already doing it in those other countries. Again, it's a thing where, you know, you turn on Bluetooth. Let's say everyone has an app. We, we agree to it. We say for the course of this uh, pandemic, I will turn on um, the, the coronavirus test and trace app, right? And then it, it would run over Bluetooth so that it would keep track of other phones that you come into contact with within, say, six feet or whatever. Um, so that then if you are tested and you come down with it, then they on, then and only then, and that gets into the point of having these guardrails in place, then they could go and see, well, Leo was within six feet of these 72 people over the last right. week, and so let's go test them. I think that's it a good It makes sense. Thing. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, but I understand also the concern. These are the um, suggestions Sam makes in his article. Health officials must drive data decisions. Uh, it can't come from government. Oh, we think this is a good idea. Yeah. It should come from health officials trying to do the right thing for health. Coronavirus-related surveillance must be clearly justified against the costs. Um, data collected should expire there shouldn't be just, oh, hey, we got all this data. Let's keep it. Uh, and it should be walled off. It should be treated like the U.S. Census is currently treated as as privileged information not to be used by other agencies, not to be used to arrest people or to find undocumented uh, immigrants, things like that. Uh, I think these are these are absolutely good points uh, raised. And uh, normally The Intercept yeah. is maybe a little bit more uh, to, to the left left-leaning than I like. But I think in this case, I think these are things we have to really pay attention to. I think the core point from Mohammed Taj Sar from the you know ACLU there it, it is, is really critical. It's just that governments tend to make these requests uh, with it's kind of like, okay, let's just, let's take that data, you know, right? And, and once they acquire the data, then once it then it becomes privileged government information where all of a sudden somebody else wants to use yep. the data for something else. And they're like, oh, we've got oh, we've got that data. We can go look at that to figure this out. And it's like, no, 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 that, that's not what nobody's there to say. Oh, no, that wasn't what we originally got that data for. Right. They just now look at it as like, oh, we now have the access to this. So we're going to use it for all these other things that we might want to use it for. And that's the key thing to make sure does not happen in something like this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's my big concern is that it you know just history is borne out as as we're all kind of discussing that any time you ever give any institution government or otherwise additional access and it's just for a short period of time like they don't like to give that access back and as um, trying and, and as you know uh, we're all in panic and, and these are like extraordinary times and they cause for extraordinary measures that has to be balanced with we can't give up our civil liberties yes. and some of our, the, our, the core parts of what makes America America simply because we're in this time because we will as the you know Patriot Act is a great example we will never get those powers back and and it, you know we have to look at what are the opportunities to do this without within the systems that we have in place because there are opportunities it might be easier if certain things are suspended but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm going to err on the side of civil liberties every day of the week. Similar to the few weeks back, you know, there were reports of them wanting to to do, you know, some tracking about, you know, where people's activities are to try to aid in, in you know, stopping the spread. And it's like, that's a, that's a great idea. I don't want the government um, being aided by Facebook or Google or, or anybody else tracking my location, no matter what they say the reason is. Like, I, I don't want that. You know, well, that's, Google, that's not Google's the country already in. Google released that thing this week where they're showing um, and it's completely anonymized and all that stuff, but showing the amount of uh, visits to parks and, and things like that and, and, and uh, groups and things. I mean, the problem is this is a I agree with everything that everyone has said in terms of the civil liberties concern, the, the government power concerns. But at the same time. In the same way that, you know, in, in 1919 or whenever the, the Spanish flu thing happened, they didn't even understand fully things like uh, antibiotics and vaccines and stuff. We have, we have the advantage right now of if the problem is tracking, testing and tracing and tracking contacts with people, we happen to have the perfect tool because everyone is carrying around supercomputers in their pockets so that – there has to be some way to take advantage of the fact that for the first time in human history, we have the perfect tools in everybody's pocket to stop an, an epidemic, to trace an epidemic, that there has to be some way to do it and not let this perfect tool go to waste. And and I, I agree with all the concerns, but at the same time, it's like your house is on fire and you're standing there with a bucket of water. <laughs> I you don't want to use it. I might water. need to drink it sometime. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, but if that were true and, and 
I think we have these these ways to track people. I mean, when we look at the countries that have responded and have managed to, you know, contain things the right way, they haven't gone that far into that level of surveillance. Now they have other Singapore. Th- Singapore has, and um, there's a couple of other uh, South Korea. I don't know if they're using, but I, I believe Singapore has one of those apps that something like 600,000 people have downloaded. Um, again, sorry, it's because I've been doing a podcast on this every day for three weeks. But um, <laughs> you're, you're an expert, counter- yeah. The counterbalance is no way. I'm not an expert. I just read all the things. Yeah. Um, the counterbalance is there's another country whose the identity eludes me right now that they've encouraged. I think it's one of the countries in the Middle East. They they created their own app, encouraged all of their population to download it. And when security researchers looked at it, it was one of those apps where it's like, oh yeah, also it's going to grab all of your right. messages, right. all of your photos, and everything. Right. So it, well, ob- but yes. This, but, but this is my point: is that even Singapore, it's not a requirement right now. If I'm if I if I if I know exactly exactly, right, true. like. That's true. So, yes. and it, I would also I would also posit that the Singapore government um, is very different from the U.S. government in terms of, you know, there are a lot of reasons why they've been more ahead of of this than we have, and one of them is that it's it's, it's strictly a place where people listen to the government and follow rules more, um, and and because the they know that the government will will take action. It's 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 very different from from our country. But I guess my point was going to be even those places that have done this, it hasn't been like it's become kind of like a requirement. Um, so I, I I look and I'm like is is this is this necessary right now? Because I, I would argue that part of the reason that Singapore has been so much better at it has nothing to do with the app. It has everything to do with you know their system of, of government, which well, definitely. Let me, let me do one more real quick um, devil's advocate for you because Leo and I were talking about this um, before we started recording, which is all right. If we want to by the summer get people back to work, some people back to work. Um, Lee and I were talking about the the second half of it, which is in theory, if people um, contract the disease and recover from it, they might be immune for a period of time. So those people can start to go back to work. But all the people, all of us sitting at home that haven't contracted it, to send people back out into the workforce, you're going to need some sort of a situation where you can monitor those people. So what if it was a situation where they said, Christina, um, you can come back into the office as long as you download this app. Maybe it's done through Microsoft or whatever, so there's layers of protection. But it's like some sort of a situation where um, if in, in the office an outbreak happens or someone in July comes down with it after people have cautiously gone back to work. Well, then we can immediately lock down that section of Microsoft and allow the rest of Microsoft to continue working. I'm just saying that there has to be some way once the sheltering in place regime hopefully ends sometime soon, because inevitably there's going to be flare ups again. And so there has to be some way to set up a system to immediately seal off like a, a leaking ship Right. Those areas where flare-ups occur, and, and and I don't disagree with that. I think my my response to that would be that I'm I'm in favor of that, but I would wonder if the better response isn't an app, but mm. getting widespread testing and getting widespread antibody testing. But to Agreed. Me, and, and, and this is what I'm saying. It's all part and parcel. It's a combination of things, because even in a best case scenario, and this would be a best case scenario that some small percentage of the population gets it, as opposed to seventy percent. The idea of people going back to work has to be, I want to be safe. You know, I, I'm not willing to go back to work until you can start to give me assurances that in in your WeWork or whatever, if that wing of the WeWork, someone had a, 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 a got reinfected or, or something like that, that you could know that within hours, you could begin to like send people home within hours. So I'm saying that, again, there are tools that we have today that we've never had before that would allow some of us and some large portion of us to start to get back to life as normal. But that also includes um, non-technical things like maybe we need to have people outside of every office uh, just testing temperatures and things like that. Right. I mean, I would just say that I guess my fear is that we're immediately going to this place of using surveillance and technology to try to contain this when we aren't even doing in the United States the the basic things that we need to do, which is testing. And until you have widespread testing and testing over and over again. So it's not just one of those things where you've been tested once, but, you know, testing people repeatedly. And we don't have that. We don't have that infrastructure. Like to me, that's that makes more sense. And if you want to use technology to aid with getting people tests, I'm all about that. 
but that's what I, I, that's I, what I, I'm, but, but I'm yeah, but I'm, I'm concerned about some of these other reaches just because I think you give access to that information. You're never going to get it back ever. If, and, you know, it, it's like the dark night, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, he, he made, you know, him, him, he made him Lucius like destroy um, the tool because it was too powerful. It's that same sort of thing. It's like, once you have that, I, I don't care how caring um, and, and how good the intentions are of any company or government, they're not going to give up that, that access. I just, they, they're just not. It's interesting too, that uh, in, in all of this, a lot, we're, we're starting to understand a little bit better how companies are tracking us and keeping that information. There's a company called Unicast that's business is selling location information, which they collect from a variety of apps and so forth. They've actually made a social distancing scoreboard. They know so much about people's locations that you can actually go look and see how your county is doing. Let's see how New York is doing in social distancing. New York County, New York. Uh, oh, good. You guys are doing well. A minus. You're, I don't know. Look out my window right now. Do you see a lot of people out there? Well, apparently. No, 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 well, you, no, you've got to look up King County. King, Kings County would be, well, that would be, yeah, New York County, that's Manhattan. Kings County looks like yeah. A minus too. So that's good. Kings it County. doesn't help that I'm a block away from the park too. So people are still, yeah. you know, yeah. heading out for their runs. But Kings let me, County. let me that's give you one a more. Minus as well. But let me show you, by the way, you would think, oh, out here in the country, we're probably doing really well. We're a C minus. You guys are doing a better job. Uh, in reducing. Well, can I give you one more argument about using data? So, so uh, this is interesting, know? though. I guess that's my point: is we're now learning a little more about how much Unicast knows. It's a valuable and interesting map, but at the same time, Unicast. Wow, who knew these guys knew all this stuff? We well, should think it's fine. You, they already have this information. I, I'm what I. Yeah, but where'd they get it? Or, well, what? Well, the same way that uh, they, they can get other deep. things. Uh, yeah. And pro pro probably probably services on your cell phone. What I'm opposed to is having more information that we're not already giving. Like that. That's what I'm opposed to is giving more access. Right. Are you guys aware of the the Kinsa Smart? Um, I use it. I love the Kinsa. Right. Yeah. So you've seen their maps as well. Yeah. The health. And that's another weather. example of. Right. That's data that we didn't know that they were keeping. And then no, we did. No, I take no. That's not true. Uh, Kins has been handing out these thermometers. They have over a million of them out there to schools for precisely this purpose. It's anonymized data. There's no way of knowing which thermometer right. is owned by anybody. But it b before COVID, it was about flu. Uh, but it's very valuable information. Uh, so see here, it even says influenza-like illness near you. You can see what's typical, atypical trends. So you can see where the hot spots are. And observed, and this is based on thermometers they've been handing out. I actually went out and bought one, part, partly because I wanted to take my temperature with a Bluetooth-enabled thermometer every day. But also, mm -hmm. I'm glad to help. In fact, they've tied into uh, the University of California at San Francisco. So every day, I think it's UCF. No, who are they tied in with? I can't remember. Is it UCSF? Say again? Aura. That's right. My ring is tied with them with UC. This also is measuring my temperature. I have temperature measurements all over the place. But this is kind of cool. So I actually have a timeline of my temperatures. Now, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, unlike influenza, uh, there's uh, COVID has a lot of asymptomatic uh, cases. We don't know how many. But, it, you know, this is some valuable information as well. And you can even see how we get a better uh, report card here if I looked at Sonoma County because we have flattened the curve, at least according to uh, temperature readouts. If I look at the graph here, this is normal for this time of year with influenza, and we're well below that, well below normal, uh, because of, I think, because of social distancing, nobody's getting the flu or... Oh, there's COVID. tons of data about that, how, of course, uh, not only is the normal flu down because nobody's out spreading it, you know, car accidents are down. There's a whole bunch, like the, the overall uh, normal death rate, <laughs> crime in New York is way down. Yeah. There's all sorts the, of the, things that the are The air not happening is clear. The fish, mm -hmm. the fish have returned to the Bellagio Fountain. Everything is better when people stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Gas prices are at historic lows. Anyway, uh, yeah, this one I don't have a problem with, Kinsa, because, A, when you get it, they say this is what's going to happen. The data is anonymized. There's no way of knowing it's your thermometer. And, uh, B, this they've been doing this for years. This is, a, this is actually a very interesting um, public health uh, effort from uh, Kinsa.